Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Well, telling ourselves the truth or self-therapy, either way, the truth must out. So today I'm discussing altering our warped mindset. Another 300 odd million dollars of Abacha looted funds returned to Nigeria. I wonder when this particular tap will run dry. This is not including loot kept away by Abacha's accomplices. Up to now, the question of good luck Jonathan's culpability in the massive looting undertaken by his trusted associate and former petroleum minister, Jay and Madweke, is unanswered. And the list is as long as the number of political office holders that there have been. Yet, Nigerians continue to ask for a return of a past rogue when an incumbent is a disappointment. Memory loss or rank stupidity or some other form of sickness or plain paid agents of destruction. Your guess is as good as mine. As a people, we must understand that there are alternatives to mediocrity and crime. We must not succumb to Stockholm Syndrome. When things are not right or immoral, we must reject them. And let's not live by generalities. Take the case of a large number of condemnations of the work of the late Abakari, who was chief of staff to Buhari. Speaking ill of the dead is not the same as being truthful about anyone dead or alive. We must be truthful regardless. We need to improve and restructure our collective mindset. We need to develop new systems of government that erase the various imperial excellencies that parried as president, governors, and others. We need real democratized spread of resources such that education and health shoot to the top of our priorities. When this happens, people will develop a healthier and less immoral attitude and approach to nation building with a sense of responsibility and humility. We have had time to think during the lockdown. We must approach things differently post-COVID. If we do not achieve this reorientation, we are doomed to failure, poverty, and disintegration. Yeah, um, which brings me back to my advocacy on um, truth. I like the word we. Yes. Um, for me, uh, it is obvious. Um, it is uh, very visible to even the blind that um, you know, we cannot, um, we shouldn't expect anything from our government. And the only way we can change our government is not for us to wait for the government to change. It is for us to believe that we indeed can change. Look at um, 2015. A lot of people wanted Buhari, oh yes, Buhari will come and change things. We all came out in the rain, in the sun to vote. Uh, but why is it that in 2019, when rather than all come out again and say, look, the way we did it in 2015, a lot of people became complacent. Oh, what we did in 2015, look at the results. So what's the hope? So for me, we need, we have we've been speaking consistently to the leaders that have consistently failed. And the leaders, like I always say, are drawn from amongst us. There's need for us also to speak to ourselves, speak true to ourselves, and agree that we are all part of this logjam. We are all part of this problem. And until we decided that, look, I am part of this pool, and I want to be different. I know people that pray for me, or I pray that they give you appointment. Why they are praying for appointment for me? It's not because they want to change, but because they believe when it gets there, you're, you're their pipeline. Yes, and, and then why some truly, genuinely want people who will get there and make a change. And, and so let's all look at the man in the mirror and say, "Look, I want to be that change." And if you look at yourself and agree that there is a truth and that we will change ourselves, we can collectively change um, the country. Okay, let me, let me come Quickly, in at sorry, that. Sorry, uh. sorry. 
just two seconds. All of the loot, Abacha loot, we're talking about now, people helped Abacha to, to loot. loot it. Yeah, he didn't do it by Nobody's himself. talking about those people yeah, yeah. because they are not dead. Yeah, yeah. They are alive with okay. us. Okay, okay. Um, like um, um, Libra said, I agree. I, I think the word we is a very positive word. Positive I think word. so that we can all take responsibility collectively. We need that collective responsibility. However, the two issues I want to raise one is education. People don't wake up and start speaking in a responsible way unless they have a mind that is trained to critically, um, do you say, dissect the issues. Otherwise, all you get are angry people. And sometimes they, they don't understand you know, how they've been duped. And I, I hope I'm not sounding patronizing. But I feel that there's a way you will educate people, even your own children, that you give them that feeling that they are part of their voice matters, their opinion matters, and they can opt in or opt out, like we spoke about the vaccine. Mm -hmm. You give them that sense of um, responsibility as well as entitlement. So I think those two need to go hand in hand. Um, the only bit I would just say slightly is that I'm not very comfortable, even though I, I, I'm, I, I somehow I understand where people are coming from when they speak about a dead man. I'm not comfortable with that whole practice, simply because when he was alive, speak about him. When he's dead, he can't answer for himself. I felt a little pang of... There was something wrong with the fact that his daughter had to say, let my father go. You know, he's dead. He's dead. Leave him. <laughs> no. When he was alive, do it. No, okay. Like now, Buhari okay. is alive. Okay. Say your piece. Okay. When he goes, I mean, I know people write books. I know there are years afterwards. Yes. I'm coming. Let me land it. There are years afterwards when you, you can be doing that. But not when they have family members. I just feel there's something, you're, you're, there's something wrong when you in, 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 you're pushing for change and your tactics are just as harsh and inhumane somehow. I don't feel comfortable with it. I have to leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, but you find out that whatever you live today, remember that people will discuss Legacy. it. It becomes history. And what is history? History is a way of a life of a people, living or dead, especially those that are dead. And, and so your actions and inactions forms part of the history that will be discussed. He was alive. The biography, All these people were not so vocal when the, he was alive. He they dies. Were, they were a very, a lot of people really? were vocal We're against. hearing more no, now. A he's lot dead. of people were vocal against Abakari. Well, the biography, the history of this world is the biography alive. of Britain. No, 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 it's only when he died that he was instead throwing stones at him. Let me, if you let me, let me, let me do a little analogy. We agree 500 that, million we agree MTN, stones were thrown MTN at him. scandal. But it wasn't as The way they're throwing stones now. When he's yeah. It was even more than. It was even more than. No, not, not, not to my take, knowledge. Take Reno exactly. Omokri, for example, who criticized Buhari vociferously. The moment Abakari died, he eulogized him and said, look, uh, he was loyal to his no, I'm, of I'm giving you names. I'm giving you names. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Mm. So a lot of people threw we're not stones saying you should lie about when his, he was alive. He's a... Called him de facto president. Um, and that every problem that Nigerians were going through oh, is because you have a Buhari who is not active to his responsibility, and Abakari, even when um, Vice President had issues, except you were not following the news. Maybe I missed so it. So when he died, a lot of people more. were scared to talk about ill of the dead, like we always say here, don't speak ill of the dead. So people who Maybe were, following him, different were criticizing him, you know, started talking about well, him. But you know that but there was a lot of sarcasm going on around that time concerning his people death. People so will write your history. If you're talking about the circumstances surrounding his death, yes, all of those people talked about all of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. But his actions and inactions, you know, now trying to paint him as if, you know, he was I one did, great man. I didn't man. see that, sure. A lot of people didn't but like for that. Me, for me, I... I when I, you know, when I um, saw all of those um, attempting to eulogize him and, you know, talking about the greatness he did, I interpreted it as sarcasm because there was nothing <laughs> true, tr to be honest, there was nothing he did to be, you know, to be praised about. So when all those people came out, oh, he did this, he was a great, I just saw sarcasm written all over the post. He was a friend of Christians. And, yeah, you know. it was all sarcasm to me, so. Mm. I, I mean, the daughter's write-up for me. Well, I don't know. I've actually revised how I feel about Abba Kiari and, you know, I really feel like, you know, we didn't really know the man. And I feel also that maybe the opposition played a hand in telling us how to think regarding this man. So, you know, we started hearing things like, oh, the fact of president, this and that, and that just conjures up all manner, you know, all types of feelings. I really still don't know the man. And after reading that eulogy from the daughter, and um, even from Femi, Fanny Kaede, who is a very vocal against the government, and um, several other people, they actually said that, yes, you know, we may yeah, disagree okay. with the politics okay, of, of, of the um, other but... Which are we out of time? Is, those, those who eulogized him but positively... Let me finish, let me finish, so that I don't okay. lose my well, trail of thought. So, so yeah, my point is that... Uche, Uche. We are, 
Uche, by 10 minutes is up. 10 minutes is up for, for me on this. Oh, well, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know how we roll here. Yeah. You know how we roll. Anyway. Um, the expression of speaking truth to power refers to a necessary tactics of positioning a nation for greatness. It shouldn't be viewed defensively. After the break, a Kene will be aiming to sensitize us to another movement that can be wrongly perceived. Welcome on board. <laughs>